Hello guys and welcome back once again to my channel here on YouTube. Today I'm doing you a review for Judgment Day 2002. So um this one I want to give to um dedicate to my friend Nathan the wrestling guy here on YouTube. Check out his channel guys. He does some awesome reviews for DVDs, wrestling DVDs. Great stuff. I enjoy his reviews all the time. You should check him out. Maybe one day he'll be as good as me, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Just kidding, dude. Just kidding. You're good. You're good. We're as good as each other. No, no, no. You're better. Anyway, let's get down to this then. So, Judgment Day 2002. Silver Vision release here in the UK and probably everywhere else back then. Um, I wanted to point out the 18 certificate looked a bit strange when i purchased this i bought this one in cex and i thought to myself hang on a minute is this a fake so i checked the cover over and everything and nah nah this pretty legit and the disc as well see has the same uh, 18 certificate so this must have been like a re reissue one because the 18 certificate from the Judgment Day uh, DVD 2002, I remember, looked like that. The older style 18 certificate. So this is obviously like a reissue of some sort. But I don't care, I've still got it now. So I'm not going to grumble anymore about it. So checking out the front, we've got like the Hangman's Noose, Judge, Jury and Executioner, uh, Undertaker, the Biker Undertaker back then, which is pretty cool. The American Badass. Um, I, f I believe this is quite a rarity uh, stateside. Uh, yeah, so like all the Canadian and uh, US guys, you can't get this one uh, very easily. Very hard to obtain, apparently. Just from what I've heard and everything. But yeah, so let's have a let's have a closer look at it then. So we got the spine here. With the catalog number and everything on, pretty boring kind of looking spine to be honest. <laughs> Judgment Day without the E as well, which is kind of strange. Does Judgment have uh, an E in it? See, because I have learning difficulties sometimes. I think to myself things like that. I don't know if they do it on purpose or <laughs> just to take the piss, but yeah. Anyway, let's have a look at the back. So we got like, uh, can Hollywood Hulk Hogan survive Undertaker's wrath? Who will survive Hell in a Cell? Whose head will be shaved? Will Steve Austin prevail? This had a runtime of 179 minutes. Um, this program contains strobe light in. Yeah, <laughs> we know. So we got like, um, the American badass uh, biker undertaker choke slamming Hulk Hogan there, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. There's a a screenshot of Chris Jericho hitting Triple H on the top of the Hell in a Cell with um, a two by four, and Austin uh, kind of throwing Ric Flair over his head. <laughs> Best way I could describe that. So let's get into the matches then. So we had, um, well, well, to start off the DVD actually, I'm going to give you some spoiler uh, warning now guys. So there's some spoilers in this. So at the beginning we had like a disturbing intro video with creepy girls singing random nursery rhymes and that um, to build up the pay-per-view. I think they used... Uh, parts of that video for Undertaker's entrance video at some point I think don't quote me on that though guys I, I just I swear I've seen them in like one of his entrance videos when he was the you know the biker American badass kind of uh, gimmick we kick things off with Eddie Guerrero and RVD it was a good match I guess this was for the Intercontinental Championship um, Eddie's physique back then looked pretty cool, I thought. He was really ripped. Uh, both these guys loved doing the, the frog splash, or five-star frog splash, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, and I've always appreciated Rob Van Dam's fighting style, wrestling style, his um, martial art kicks and, uh, you know, rolling thunder and everything. Very good, very agile wrestler, uh, Rob Van Dam. Eddie managed to pick up the victory with a backslide pin here, um, which was which was cool, I guess. It was a really uh, tough one for me to call where who I wanted to win that match, to be honest, because I, I do like uh, both Rob Van Dam and... Eddie Guerrero, Latino Heat. We had a backstage segment next with uh, Reverend Devon, Deacon Batista, preaching Vin uh, to Vince McMahon and Stacey Keebler, some weird shit. <laughs> and then we had an advert for Get the F Out. So basically it was like a an old granny cutting her hedge and uh, she managed to cut the, the F off of the WWF logo. And um, I bet that pleased all the panda-loving World Wildlife Fund guys <laughs> seeing that shit. <laughs> we had Trish Stratus versus Stacey Keebler next for the WWE Women's title. I thought it was a good match. Um, well, okay-ish match, actually. Not not going to lie. Because <laughs> it wasn't brilliant. <laughs> we had lots of interference going on. We had, like... Batista slamming Trish, which was pretty uh, shocking because you don't see that kind of shit go on nowadays in, uh, in wrestling, do you? Not like men manhandling women like that. But yeah, that was uh, pretty brutal. And then um, we've, we got uh, yeah interference, as I said, from Devon, Batista, and Bubba as well. And it's just, what's the point, you know? It was a good match though, like I said, it was alright. Um, from what I remember, I think Trish won this one. I could be wrong though. Sorry if I am, guys. I, <laughs> I don't even have it in my notes if, <laughs> if she won or not. I'm sorry about that one. I'm just there having a look through now. No, very strange. Anyway, moving on. Backstage segment with Ric Flair. Arn Anderson and Vince McMahon. They had like a conversation about brand supremacy and uh, how to take care of Sto Stone Cold Steve Austin, how to take him out uh, with a build up to the handicap match that was coming later. Uh, next up, we had the Hardy Boys versus uh, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Obviously, Brock being pushed heavily this time because he was very new in WWE and. Um, he was like the unstoppable monster. And wow, Brock fucking destroyed the Hardys. Uh, the Hardys threw everything at him, but he just he was just too much for them both. Paul Heyman was there, you know, just as... He just acted like a weasel throughout the match, to be honest. He kept carrying away like a little twat. And, you know, Lesnar done all the work. So Le uh, Team Lesnar picked up the victory... Um, after Heyman pinned Jeff, which was fucking stupid. After he come out from hiding away. <laughs> we had a backstage segment with Booker T. Um, he was wearing a NWO t-shirt. He tried to pull this young uh, lady, kind of like a fan, I guess, backstage. Pretty random. <laughs> yeah. Next we had... Um, the Big Show and Ric Flair versus Stone Cold Steve Austin in a handicap match. And um, the NWO music they used for Big Show and Flair was just stupid, really. I didn't like that at all. Um, they should have used the original NWO music. Just my opinion, though, guys. Um, Stone Cold, he, he pretty much owned both of these guys throughout the match. Um, so he flipped the bird to Flair. What? He flipped the bird to Big Show. What? And he flipped Charles uh, Robinson, the referee. What? <laughs> Grabbed himself a can of Steve Weiser, um, which Charles Robinson removed instantly. Austin went nuts. It was crazy. I must admit, though, Ric Flair's physique uh, looked pretty awesome throughout this match. He um, he stayed pretty toned uh, throughout the uh, you know, throughout this time period. It was pretty cool. Um, Austin stumped a mod hole and Flair, and then X-Pac tried to interfere, only to get treated 
uh, to a Stone Cold Stunner by Austin. Uh, Flair was also lucky enough to have one as well, and uh, that picked up Stone Cold the victory. It was a good match, that one. Then we had um, Kurt Angle versus Edge, a hair versus hair match. So we saw a clip of what both Kurt Angle and Edge would look like without any hair. And Angle's was spot on, <laughs> kind of looked like what he looks like now. Uh, but Edge's looked fucking weird. <laughs> And this was an okay match, I guess. Um, it was a huge win for Edge at this point of his career. I thought this was really cool for him. So, he, you know, he deserved that. It's pretty cool. We had another backstage segment with Booker T and his, uh, and his new fuck buddy. He picked up backstage, what I was talking to you about earlier. They were in a hotel room together, turned out the lights, and then... He's like, oh yeah, do this, oh, that feels good, and all that kind of shit. And then we heard Goldust's voice, and uh, Goldust showed up in like a kind of corset, which is pretty fucking funny. Weird as well. <laughs> okay, if you like that kind of shit. And then, um, yeah, it was just really weird. He, he felt like kind of left out and jealous, Goldust, poor guy. <laughs> He loved Booker T, didn't he? They were a good tag team. And then we had uh, Chris Jericho versus Triple H in a Hell in a Cell match. I was surprised how much um, taller Triple H was in comparison to Jericho. Um, when they stood uh, like face to face with each other, it's very strange. A very brutal match, I personally thought. Both guys shed a lot of blood. Um, take into consideration, this is like pg-17 shit or 18 rated shit here in the uk as you call it get that glare off <laughs> I, I i have um obviously never uh watched this on the network or peacock and i was wondering you know is this as legit an uncut as it is on dvd i mean do have you guys ever watched it on the network this pay-per-view and these kind of pay-per-views have the 18 rating do they do they stay uncut or do they edit it see this is why it's good to be a you know a wrestling dvd collector as myself because because of just random shit like that to be honest you just don't know do you let me know in the comments below guys honestly um Back to the match anyway, we had like 2 by 4s wrapped in barbed wire, fucking badass shit. Uh, seeing the referee climb the, the cell was quite fucking nuts as well. And they, well, they all ended up at the top at the end. Uh, Triple H picked up the victory after a pedigree on top of the cell. It's fucking awesome shit, good hell in a cell match that one. Uh, very um, well hidden gem that one I do believe. We had a backstage segment with uh, Kurt Angle avoiding his haircut next. Quite funny shit. Um, and another Get the F Out video, but it was like a sex one. Like these, uh, these guys, have, a bloke and a woman having sex in the car. And it was just random. It was like, why? <laughs> Seriously, guys, I'm not making this shit up. Check it out. It's just fucking weird. Um... Maven and Tori were uh, chatting over a drink. My eyes were on uh, Tori's revealing dress um, during those backstage segments. And we had Billy and Chuck versus Rikishi and Rico next for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Um, so, so Rico, um, which is which was Billy and Chuck's assistant, I guess. He was paired with Rikishi. And what I thought was a strange match, Rikishi pretty much done all this work by himself and he won the match and become WWE Tag Team Champion with Rico, but he didn't really give a shit. He just had the belts himself and he was like, fuck Rico, I got this kind of attitude. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> cool. Then we had another backstage segment. We had like Edge. He got attacked by Kurt Angle. The... That fucker didn't want his luck sheared, that's for sure. Um, they both brawled out in the arena. Edge applied a sleeper on Angle, placed him in the barber's chair. Then Edge uh, shaved Kurt's head, which was awesome. 
I could be wrong, guys, but I swear this was a storyline in PlayStation 2 Smackdown Shut Your Mouth back in the day. Was it? I, I can't remember now. <laughs> I have to go fish that one out from um, from my boxes and storage and that to find out. I just don't remember. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Then we had our main event next. We had Hollywood Hulk Hogan versus Undertaker. Right, so for me, guys, this was like a dream match. I watched these guys um, go at it when I was a little tiny bunny, when I was a little beat-down bunny and not a big beat-down bunny. And it was awesome. Seeing these guys get it on in the match, awesome. Undisputed title was on the line. Hogan going in as champion. Taker getting straight into the match. Taking uh, Hogan's belt from him, not not his uh, not the championship belt, his belt that he wears around his waist, you know, like that kind of weightlifter belt thing, that red one that he wears, or a yellow one in this case it might have been, I can't remember the colour of it now, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And he kept whipping him about for a bit, and um, Hulk, uh, Hulk managed to uh, fight back for a bit, and um, Vince tried to interfere, Hogan owned him as well. But Hogan sadly lost after Taker used to chair and chokeslammed him for the championship, becoming undisputed, undisputed champion. Um, and as I said, Vince got involved like a little prick. Stupid. Very annoying. But this this kind of stuff that goes on on this pay-per-view, you wouldn't be able to get away with that nowadays with the uh, you know the stuff WWE produce now. It just wouldn't happen. They wouldn't allow it. And if I didn't say so already, this was from Sunday, May 19th, 2002, from Nashville, Tennessee. So we're going to have a look at the extras uh, quickly then, guys, and then I'll give you my score. So we've got three bonus interviews, Bite List with Triple H, Sunday Night Heat uh, match, WWE European Championship was on the line, William Regal versus D'Lo Brown, that was a good match as well. So definitely worth checking out that one as well, guys. Yeah, so that was Judgment Day 2002, guys. Um, I'm going to give it a score of 7.5 out of 10. Uh, Nathan, the wrestling guy, I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed this review. And the rest of you guys as well for joining me today. I hope you've all enjoyed this review too. Uh, it's always a pleasure doing these videos for you. It helps me with my problems and that. And it means a lot. And... Um, yeah, please feel free to like and subscribe and always comment guys because I'm always up for a chat. I might not get back to you straight away, but I will I will do eventually. I'm not ignoring you, so don't think I'm not. I, I am or whatever, you know. Uh, please take care, care of yourselves guys and uh, peace.